Did you know that your saliva is more than just spit? It's like a secret weapon for your mouth, and it defends against bacteria, against gum disease, against cavities, and bad breath. And when people have conditions of low saliva, then they are at a huge risk of getting more cavities and gum disease. And saliva even does more than that. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the importance of saliva, and also if you don't have enough of it, how you can increase your salivary flow. So what is saliva made out of? So saliva is mostly water. It's about 95 to 99% water. So this will help keep your mouth moist and comfortable, but it'll also act like a solvent to help start dissolving food particles and also, this even aids in your taste and your digestion. Saliva also has different electrolytes, like different salts and minerals. So these are things like calcium and phosphate, potassium, sodium, and chloride, and also bicarbonate. These are important because for one, it'll help remineralize your tooth structure. For example, your enamel is made out of calcium and phosphorus. So having this calcium and phosphorus in your saliva is very beneficial. And also these minerals in your saliva will balance the pH in your mouth. Now this is really important because acid is what causes cavities. Even if you eat sugar, those bacteria that eat that sugar in your mouth will poop out acids that will damage your teeth. So no matter what, acids are terrible for your teeth. And if you have this buffering with your saliva, then that's gonna be a really good way to prevent getting cavities. Your saliva also has different proteins and enzymes. These are things like amylase and lipase, mucins, lysozymes, and other components. And these are super important because, for example, your amylase will break down starches, your lipase will break down fats, so these are basically the start of digestion in your mouth. These also ensure that your saliva will provide antibacterial and antifungal components, so they'll prevent infections or bacteria in your mouth from causing problems. Speaking of preventing infections, your saliva also has antibodies. Specifically, your saliva has secretory immunoglobulin A, or SIG-A. This is going to be one of your first lines of defense, defending against bacteria and viruses and preventing you from getting sick. Now, these aren't all the components of your saliva, but it is most of them. And I want you to get a picture of how important your saliva actually is. And not just for preventing cavities, but also just improving your overall health. Now, let's go over why your saliva might be low. One reason could be the way that you breathe. If you are a mouth breather, meaning your mouth is always open and you're constantly breathing through your mouth as opposed to your nose, then you're gonna be drying up or evaporating a lot of the saliva in your mouth. Also, the act of exhaling through your mouth will release a lot more water from your body and cause a lot more dehydration. And if you're dehydrated, your body is not gonna be able to produce as much saliva because we also saw that one of the major components of saliva is just water. For example, if you were to try to fog up a glass or something like that, you'd have to probably breathe out of your mouth kind of like this. <sighs> No one's gonna try to do it with their nose. Now, if you were to try to fog up a glass with your nose, you'll notice that when you exhale through your nose, it doesn't really get foggy. And that's because your nose will retain a lot of that moisture and not cause as much dehydration. So people who are mouth breathers are way more prone to getting cavities and gum disease and a ton of other problems with their mouth, where I'm not gonna get to in this video, but I did make some other videos on it. So I'm putting a link in the description below if you wanna learn more about that. But some signs to see if you're a mouth breather is, one, if you're watching TV or something like that and you notice that your lips are hanging open, or you can even ask one of your friends or something to watch you and see, hey, are my lips open when I'm not paying attention? Or whenever you wake up in the morning, is your mouth open and is there drool on your pillow or anything like that? Because these are all signs that you've been breathing in and out of your mouth. And this is actually one of the major reasons that people have that morning breath or their breath smells terrible the next day because they've been drying up all that saliva in their mouth because your saliva is also important for fighting those bad breath causing bacteria. There's a lot of reasons people could be a mouth breather. It could be some nasal congestion. It could be allergies. It could be a deviated septum where your nose is basically broken. Some simple tips you can try using are using a mouth tape or literally just a piece of tape that goes over your lips. The tape that I like to use is something called 3M Micropore Paper Tape. It's really simple. You just rip off a piece and put it over your lips. You can also try using a nasal dilator strip. There's plenty of different ones out there, but some of the basic ones just go over your nose and kind of dilate your nose a little bit. Again, I'm going into more detail on that in some other videos, so I'm not gonna bore you with the details here. So check out the description below for some other videos on that. Now, what else will reduce your saliva? Well, if you're dehydrated, so not just from mouth breathing, but even just not drinking enough water is gonna dehydrate you and then not allow you to produce as much saliva. Also, a big one is medications. A ton of medications will cause dry mouth or xerostomia as a side effect. So some common culprits of a dry mouth are antihistamines, antidepressants, 
or diuretics. Diuretics are basically things that will encourage your body to excrete water. So for example, coffee is even a mild diuretic. Now coffee alone is not gonna be a big deal. It's not gonna be the reason that you have a dry mouth. Now two other things that will destroy your saliva production are alcohol and smoking. So alcohol is also a diuretic, meaning it'll dehydrate you. But also alcohol can actively damage your salivary glands, which are necessary to actually produce that saliva. Chronic alcohol is actually associated with something called sialadenesis, which is when your salivary glands become swollen and dysfunctional. So I'd even avoid an alcohol mouthwash. And a lot of different mouthwashes will target saying they're antibacterial and they have alcohol in it as an antiseptic. But the problem with those is they are gonna dry out those tissues and probably do more harm than good. There's plenty of products out there that will do just as good without having that alcohol in it. Now smoking also will directly impact your salivary glands. They will lead to irritation and a lot of inflammation in your salivary glands. And this over time can lead to less saliva in your mouth. Also, so the act of smoking itself will kind of limit the moisture in your mouth because it's very hot and very dry. But it's not just smoking itself. Nicotine is also a problem. So sometimes people think that e-cigarettes or vapes are better, or they even think that just a nicotine pouch is better because it's not smoking. Yeah, in some instances it might be better, but it's still gonna cause problems with your saliva because nicotine is vasoconstrictive, meaning it will narrow those blood vessels and limit the blood flow that is actually going to those salivary glands. And without as much blood, flow, they're not going to function as well. So if you feel like you have a dry mouth, what are some things that you can do? Well, obviously doing the opposite of some of the things I talked about before. Staying hydrated, avoiding alcohol and avoiding smoking and nicotine. You can also stimulate saliva production. Anytime you eat anything, it's going to stimulate saliva in your mouth. So a great way to do this is after your meals, eating a sugar-free gum, especially something that has xylitol in it. The benefit of this is not only are you increasing that saliva in your mouth and giving that saliva time to wash away those food particles that you just ate, wash away that bacteria in your mouth and dilute those acids in your mouth, but also xylitol is really cool because it's an antibacterial. Xylitol is the only sugar substitute that actively prevents cavities. So that means on top of the bonus of having extra saliva, you're gonna get the added bonus of preventing cavities with this xylitol. And if you're gonna snack, snack on things that have water in them. So things like celery or apples or different leafy greens, because all of these things are either crunchy or they have water in them, which can help hydrate you, but the crunchiness will kind of act like a natural toothbrush and scrub and keep your teeth clean. You can also talk to your doctor about adjusting your medications if that's the reason that you have a dry mouth and seeing if there's a different medication they can put you on or even give you like a salivary substitute. You can even talk to your dentist about this as well to see if they have a recommendation of a mouthwash or some salivary substitute. And lastly, correcting mouth breathing and encouraging nasal breathing or breathing through your nose as much as possible. So that's all I have. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. You could be brushing and flossing and keeping your teeth super clean but there might be some habits that are absolutely destroying your teeth. And I'm not just talking about like opening a bottle with your tooth because that's pretty obvious that that can crack your tooth. I mean, even something as small as ripping open a package or something when your hands are full can do a lot of damage to